we have an important guest with us, uh, more to gauge uh, the trend in the economy and in the consumption sector. Rakesh Biani, Joint Managing Director of Future Group, joins us. Good morning, Rakesh. Thank you very much for dropping in. Uh, well, actually, tell us what's the festive season or a year-end uh, shopping looking like. Uh, looks like it's tough times for retailers. Uh, we didn't. Uh, there were there were people who called the Diwali season a flop on the channel. Some of the consumer uh, buyers and now retail uh, or online buying looks like is picking up briskly. Uh, good morning. Um, I must say that yes, uh, the festive season was uh, below expectations. Uh, it still ended on the positive side over the last year, mm. uh, but I think everybody had a lot of hope that it's going to be a very, very strong season. Unfortunately, uh, being an early Diwali uh, coupled with uh, all kinds of disruptions in the market with uh, unwarranted discount schemes, etc., it, I think it's uh, to a certain extent confused the consumer. And also, I think, you know, there's been a shift in the pattern. Uh, there was clearly a uh, lot more people were landing up buying things which are being sold so cheap and things not necessarily what they require, you know. And because the electronics uh, category was significantly discounted in the festive period and, and people landed up buying things which maybe many of them will just not use it. <laughs> but that, that does happen. Discounts make people take decisions in, in a direction. They say the fact that let's buy it today. And that's what they did. But going forward, uh, I think November uh, started off well with the we wedding seasons, etc. Uh, but the delayed winter definitely has been a cause of concern. But it's good last few weeks, a uh, couple of weeks or so now, uh, the business is back on track, uh, looking quite positive. Uh, the cold weather is uh, only helping the business to go up. And I think that uh, this is the trend that is going to continue. Uh, we have a huge uh, discount sale period happening starting in all through Jan. Mm. And that should bring back consumers in a, in a big way. So uh, I think if you look at overall 2014, uh, the way it has played out, it's one of the better years for retail industry, uh, I would say that. But a lot, lo lot lower than what the expectations were. I think you know, everybody had a very high expectation. Uh, the macro indicators kind of said the fact that the consumers should be back into the marketplace. Mm -hmm. They have come back, but not at the level that one wanted them to be at. Hmm. Rakesh, hi, good morning. Uh, how much of this is to do with the onslaught of the e-commerce discounting, you know, because anecdotal evidence suggests that uh, your own brands like uh, Big Bazaar, Food Bazaar, etc. are getting hit quite badly um, with, uh, you know, these e-commerce sites like localbanya.com, bigbasket.com. Is that something you're noticing as well? And if yes, how are you planning to combat this? No, I think it's quite contrary. You know, in fact, most of these brands have been least impacted uh, by what's happening in the online world. Mm -hmm. Online is not, of course, you know, it's a definitely a new channel which is emerging, and it's quite good to see that consumers are feeling uh, happy to shop online and actually kind of trusting the entire process. Mm -hmm. You know, the first half, uh, the first period in life was clearly about consumers not trusting, not being able to decide that should I put my credit card number or no, not sure what will I get the right product or no. So that was the first journey, but now at least. You as consumers feel that uh, is the right place. It's one more channel that we must go and shop. But bulk of the business still is continuing to happen in the brick and mortar stores. So, you know, I think the perception saying the fact that the consumers have left the brick and mortar stores and the malls have become empty is an incorrect perception. Mm -hmm. uh, yes, in some of the brands' businesses, uh, the online discounting has impacted those brands. Uh, what I've, whatever I have picked up from the marketplace is some of the EBO business or the exclusive brand outlet business of brands has got impacted because, uh, so, you know, many of these marketplaces are kind of subsidizing the discounts. Uh, that the sellers are putting in. So, which is not the right thing to do. Mm. Uh, unfortunately, nothing much has happened and I just hope the fact that uh, sooner than later, uh, the government uh, looks into the, the, the kind of discounting that is happening and the kind of way the discounts are being shared. Mm. shared. Uh, it's not it's not the right way to go about uh, building the right uh, economic viability of any business. So, uh, but I, I think that these these are phases. Uh, I don't see uh, those levels of discounting and those levels of subsidizing continuing forever. It just can't be possible. I think most of us uh, are getting awed by the fact that how can the prices can be so lower? You know, I, the margins don't exist to that level. So nobody could really sell that product. So I think whoever has bought those products at that point of time. Uh, should feel happy about it, okay. but uh, I, I doubt that uh, such levels of discounting can go on forever. 
No, that point is second. Actually, you know, uh, we in Mumbai could get carried away by the online uh, idea simply because we are beset with traffic jams and parking problems more than perhaps, uh, you know, other cities, as well perhaps uh, more uh, uh, recourse to online in this city. But give us some color about tier two cities, about outside Mumbai cities. Are you seeing any improvement of uh, household disposable incomes? Uh, is there at least a troughing out of, uh, uh, you know, buyers' incapacity to buy? And is there a return of the buyer volume-wise, value-wise? Uh, I think uh, this year the, uh, the biggest positive has been the increase in the volume. I think you have to also reflect into the fact that uh, the commodity cycle is on the reverse and you know, most of the commodities have corrected prices and they are under trading today at a quite a low level compared to past. And if you are continuing to be able to maintain value growth, it's only happening because there is quantity growth and it's also happening because there are more people walking into the store. And uh, clearly in tier two towns, the demand is strong. Uh, so is the demand strong in metros. Yes, traffic is a concern, but then that's what the re retailers like us have been doing. Uh, we've been expanding our presence in the metro cities and compared to having four stores in the past, today we run anything between 14 to 20 stores in quite a lot of these uh, cities. So, you know, from being a destination store, we've kind of migrated to being more like a neighborhood store, okay. uh, reflecting <laughs> into the way the, where the urban markets in India have really evolved. Yeah. Okay. Uh, in terms of product categories, uh, Rakesh, what's the sense you're getting about where the demand has weakened the most and also where the demand has been resilient? Well, I think uh, in the, the demand, uh, the category which seems to have got uh, discounted significantly is footwear for sure. You know, I think consumers uh, have landed up. Uh, buying a lot more footwear uh, on a discounted kind of price, so that's been under pressure. Mm -hmm. The volumes are high, but not the values. Uh, that, that's quite clear. And I think, uh, you know, in terms of volume, uh, both smartphones as well as uh, on panel television, the volumes have gone up, but the values remain unchanged to a larger extent uh, purely because of the fact that uh, this year almost everything, the smartphones, uh, the uh, television panels, etc., they're selling at about 30% lower price compared to last year. And which is which is what happens almost every year. Typically, you don't see a 30% drop in price, but I think as the new technology emerges, you know, as one as a full HD is migrating towards a 4K, mm. the price on full HD has gone down. The price on a smartphone with a 5.5 inch screen, 720p screen, etc., is now below 10,000, something which used to cost typically 20,000 odd rupees. So th these are these are the things which have happened, and so the volumes have gone up, but the values kind of you know st struggle to grow in terms of value terms. Okay, so what's the plan for 2015 uh, in terms of uh, CapEx? Uh, what are your expectations in terms of revenues? Well, I think, uh, to, you know, uh, the indicators are all positive for 2015. And I think it's a year where one has to, you know, uh, you know, we have to get ready to transition into what is going to happen in 2016. The game changer is happening in 2016, the GST. Mm -hmm. and, and it is going to get implemented, and that's mm -hmm. the good news. Uh, but what everybody needs to do, and especially retailers like us, uh, have to really work hard uh, to build the economies of scale that you can create with the, with the way GST will come through. But the first half of it is, has to go with uh, working with the government as an industry body, uh, trying to make it ensure the fact that GST gets implemented in the way it has been thought through in the, over the years. You know, I think we keep hearing about the concerns of states in terms of revenue is not going to be matching in mm. and they want uh, support, etc. But I think the key thing that one needs to really look at is the fact that it's the right time to ensure the fact that more and more people come into the tax net, mm. uh, more and more retailers, more and more traders and manufacturers, etc. come, uh, you know, kind of are in the tax net. Now, what that can do is the fact that it can only increase the compliance level, mm. which means the fact that we could easily actually get a lower rate of GST, which could boost consumption. Mm. And I think if government is serious about continuing... Uh, when I mean, you think about a Make in India campaign, which is a fantastic idea that the government is pursuing, uh, but that has to get supported by a significant increase in consumption within the country. Uh, it's not only about what you're going to do. You know, globally things don't look ad, uh, as good. Mm. Uh, demand is quite weak, uh, and it grows at a very small pace. Yes, India will get an opportunity to replace some of the other countries which have been exporting in big numbers. Uh, over the years and their cost base are increasing. So we would get some opportunity to replace those countries as a, as a place to source from. Mm. But 
the world is looking at India as a consumption market, and I think Make in India needs to really work on how to increase the consumption within India. And if that can be done with the right GST rate structure, mm. easily, easy implementation, seamless implementation, uh, I, I think 2016 onwards the domestic business could look at a very, very high growth rates. All right. Thank you very much uh, for that uh, longer-term perspective, Rakesh Biani. Have a great 2015 as well. Thanks for joining us.